we're going to talk about effective documentation for hospitalized patients. This is beyond E&M coding, and this is a way that you can help the hospital that you're working at bill effectively for the services they actually provide. First, you need to make sure that you've documented well for the E&M purposes. Make sure you're billing and coding appropriately for what you need to do. Then, look, think about the DRGs, or diagnosis-related groups. Medical, these are medical codes used to determine the payment to hospitals. They were initially used by Medicare and are now used by most insurers. They're based on a primary diagnosis, such as pneumonia or cardiac bypass surgery. Most problems are represented as a family of DRG codes, such as the problem alone, the problem with a comorbid condition, and the problem with a major comorbid condition. For example, with pneumonia, DRG 193 is pneumonia, 194 is pneumonia with a complicating or comorbid condition, and DRG-195 is simple pneumonia with a major comorbid condition. These are important because each DRG has a specific payment amount, an estimated hospital length of stay, an estimated rate of hospital readmission, an estimated mortality rate. If you look at hospital reimbursement for pneumonia, we're going to talk about complex pneumonia. DRG-179 pays about $5,400. Uh, complex pneumonia with a comorbid condition pays about $8,000. And DRG-177, complex pneumonia with a major comorbid condition pays $11,300. It's important to remember that DRG-based reimbursement for a particular patient may be less than the cost of actually delivering the hospital-based medical care. So what are these CCs and MCCs? Those are comorbid or complicating conditions and major comorbid and complicating conditions. You need to document these by listing all comorbid diagnoses, even if well controlled, include suspected or probable diagnoses, and use specific diagnostic terms, specifically the ICD-10 ter uh, terminology. Some common CCs are acute blood loss anemia, acute renal failure, a BMI of 40 or greater, chronic kidney disease stage 4 or 5, chronic respiratory failure, and chronic heart failure, be that either systolic or diastolic. Some major comorbid or complicating conditions are things like acute respiratory failure, acute heart failure, either systolic or diastolic or combined, encephalopathy, end-stage renal disease, sepsis, and severe malnutrition. We're going to talk about a patient case. We have a 65-year-old male with a history of congestive heart failure, diabetes, type 2, and hypertension who's admitted with pneumonia that developed while recovering from knee surgery at a nursing home. His temperature is 38.6, pulse 101, O2 saturation is 86% on room air. He has a low bar infiltrate on his chest x-ray and a white blood cell count of 15,000. So your docu documentation in the medical decision making section of the note could look something like this. A 65 year old male with pneumonia, comma H cap, start antibiotics, get blood cultures. Diabetes mellitus type 2, continue insulin, CHF, continue home medications. Hypertension, continue home medications. This would likely be coded out as DRG-193, simple pneumonia. The hospital reimbursement for this is about $4,000. HCAP, though, is an abbreviation that's not in the ICD-10 coding system, and therefore doesn't count. In reality, this reflects a more difficult to treat pneumonia. The other thing is, is you have CHF, which it's not clear if this is acute or chronic systolic or diastolic heart failure, and this diagnosis is not specific enough to qualify for a CC or an MCC. So you could improve this, and you could say you have a 65-year-old male with pneumonia, possible MRSA due to nursing home uh, residents and a recent hospital stay, start antibiotics, get blood cultures. Just changing that would likely result in this being coded as a DRG-179, 
complex pneumonia, the hospital reimbursement for this is about $5,400. But you can do even better than that. You could change this to chronic systolic CHF to reflect the actual problem with the patient, and this would be coded as DRG-178, complex pneumonia with a CC. The hospital reimbursement is nearly $8,000 at this point, which is more likely to cover the actual cost of delivering the health care for this patient. Are you missing anything? Anything that you could do? Well, you can think about sepsis. Sepsis has a known or suspected source of infection and two or more of the following. A temperature less than 36 degrees or greater than 38, a heart rate greater than 90, a respiratory rate greater than 20, and a white blood or a white blood cell count less than 4,000 or greater than 12,000. Now, admittedly, there are newer definitions of sepsis, but this is the one that Medicare currently is accepting. So the patient does have sepsis looking at their presenting problem with their elevated temperature, their pulse of 101, the low bar infiltrate on chest x-ray, and a white blood cell count of 15,000. They also ha have acute hypoxic respiratory failure because they have any one of the following, a partial pressure of oxygen less than 60, an oxygen saturation less than 91% on room air, a PO2 over FiO2 ratio, of less than 300 or a 10 millimeter of mercury decrease in the baseline PO2 if that is known. So the patient also has acute respiratory failure. So you could further tweak your documentation and you get something like this. You have a 65 year old male with pneumonia, possible MRSA due to being a nursing home resident and a recent stay in the hospital, start antibiotics, get blood cultures. Sepsis due to pneumonia will place the patient on antibiotics and fluid resuscitate him. Acute respiratory failure due to pneumonia will treat him with oxygen. Diabetes mellitus type 2, continue insulin. Chronic systolic congestive heart failure, continue home medications. And hypertension, continue home medications. This would be likely coded out as a DRG-177 complex pneumonia with a major complicating condition. The reimbursement for this is $11,300. So the consequences of the better documentation is you've been able to shift hospital reimbursement for the same patient from about $4,000 to $11,000. This is more likely to cover the actual cost of the health care that you're delivering, and it's pretty good for just using the right terminology. The other consequence of this is that it, it impacts risk-adjusted performance because the DRG influences estimated length of stay, severity of illness, mortality rate, and the readmission rate. So why is this important? Well, it's because of the compensation models that are used. They often include a quality measure, which may be based on your performance with length of stay, mortality rates, better documentation or other factors related to this. Medic Medicare and Medicaid are changing revenue to be based primarily on quality, not just quantity alone, and this is, will result in a substantial change to how physicians work and how physicians are paid. And it also underscores the importance of documenting as effectively and appropriately as possible. The triple challenges of cost, quality, and value are reflected in the need for accurate and timely hospital documentation. Documentation affects the perceived quality of the health care. It also affects the cost of the health care. It also affects the reimbursement for that health care and also affects the value of the care that's provided.